We have a bogey at three o'clock. It's okay, Paul, chill out. We have an 11.30. Okay, fair not to call them bogeys. We have a tango at three o'clock. Don't do anything and stop calling them tangos. Ah, uh, good, don't humanize them, good point. Uh, let's go old school, let's go British. Okay, we have an x-ray at three o'clock. Definite threat. Moving to take the shot. Don't take the shot. I'm taking the shot. You'll thank me when I've done it. Definite threat. Don't take the shot. I'm taking it. Shot taken. Target down. Moving to CQB. Target acquired, bring them in. Target acquired, taken down and brought in. Uh, you're welcome. They have an appointment card. It's my mother. What about that thing you heard with that chiropractor like adjusted that person's neck who was dead and then they came back to life. Maybe you should try that. I, I don't think that worked. You must feel pretty bad about yourself right now. Hello, it's Paul at Instant Cairo, and today we're talking about your little clinic building. <laughs> Hi, everybody. You've just bought your little clinic building, or you've built up your business there, and now you want to make sure that it's protected. That's understandable. And so, over the next few months, we're going to do clinic security, intermingled with our usual podcasts and interviews. Today, we're specifically dealing with perimeter security, and in that, we're going to deal with closed circuit television, CCTV or security cameras. It all means the same thing. Now I understand that your clinic cannot be an island. It'd be great if we protected it, but that'd be very difficult to get patients in there. But with a bit of planning, we can usually sort out the average clinic's security needs very easily and quite cost effectively. But first, a message from our sponsor, Impact Inc, who we're very grateful for and who pay for this podcast. It's a small trailer and it involves me. Thanks to Impact Inc, the makers of the Arthrostim instrument, they're going to give you $75 off the pre-order of my pelvic torsion course, which is due to release next week. And in it, we show you all the tools and how to use it to unlock the pelvis in a way that's never been shown before, uh, using Arthrostim, the Vibracussa, and our hands, and various other tools, with and without tools. We go through the four releases of the pelvis to show you how to really get that change. And we also show you how to use every one of the tools that you may choose to use to do this. Where to place it and how to provide the change needed to get that pelvis to move. Freeing up the prone straight leg raise, which is what allows us to walk without pain. And it was $125, but Impact Inc have given you $75 off to allow you to be the first to find this new way of treating the pelvis. To pre-order, just add to cart now and you'll be notified as soon as it's available. And you can pre-order that at instantcairo.com. Thank you for watching that. And now we're back to talk about how to install security cameras. But first we need to decide whether we want to be overt or covert. Covert means secret or hidden. And that's usually beneficial for an average everyday sort of clinic uh, that doesn't have huge car parking areas is not part of a large industrial complex. So that's usually best for covert, where the cameras and security are not too visible, but do provide the function that's required. Whereas if we have large car parking spaces, it's better to do overt so people can see the security all around and not be tempted. It's always best to protect good people from doing bad things. And so overt can be quite beneficial if you've got one of these larger areas. And to do that, you can put up multiple cameras, of course. And then, of course, we have multiple signage, which may be a legal requirement in your area, but could not be a legal requirement and may just be there to help you in your goal of securing your property. 
Now, of course, we have the in-between, which is what a lot of clinics are, which is a semi-commercial building. And that can be a mixture of overt and covert as well. And so when we think about these different things, the principles are the same, though. The principles are maximum coverage of area for visual recording and some deterrent. So let's talk about security cameras in depth right now. So a lot of time people think about security cameras, they think that it's going to take a lot of time and a lot of money uh, to do this sort of thing with high-tech equipment and all these different things. And it doesn't take that much time or doesn't take that much money. They may also think they need a team of people to monitor the CCTV all the time and a huge data centre. Well, that just isn't correct. And we're going to show you how you can get the equivalent of a huge data centre and a huge IT company working for you for free. We also might envision these huge cameras with big cables going through our building. And again, that doesn't have to be the case unless you're going for that overt visual deterrent over a larger area. Most cameras are discreet and blend in with the building or take up a little visual field just enough to give the warning but without being totally scary. And you can see this in car parks when they've got the little dangling down CCTV as opposed to the big cameras. That's a more discreet or upmarket version of the security camera. But I want to suggest to you something else, something that's a little bit better and I like to use them in all of my clinics and all of my buildings and it's the ring cameras. Ring cameras are very very good. They are easy to install and they look great. They have doorbells that not only record people when they press the doorbell but record passive motion so they let you know before anyone even gets to the door. And not only that, but it notifies you on your phone where you can watch and directly communicate with that person as if you're in the house. They have floodlight cameras which illuminate the area and are motion censored. They have discrete cameras with night vision and all the notifications come directly to your phone on an app. And it's also cloud based so you can download the videos of what's happened previously as well. And the app is amazing. It even allows you to lock your door if you have the integrated lock and set your alarm if you have the integrated alarm. So it's really good. But I'm going to show you how the cameras work now by doing a little test. Okay, so it's only like 10 o'clock at night. I'm on my main street and I'm looking at my house. And I'm just going to go across and show you the difference uh, with the ring cameras. So I'm going to pretend to be a, an interesting bad guy uh, or just a lost person. And I'm just going to walk up to my cars. Here we go. And what we're going to, oh, all of a sudden I'm on the camera there and my phone's just told me that there's somebody on my drive and I'm going to send that video uh, to you guys to show you that. And we can see the difference between my thousand dollar iPhone and the Ring Cam which is not a thousand dollars by a long way and therefore the, the video quality is amazing with it even under the same light. But that's not all. There's motion at my drive. I know, I've just created it. I've turned all my lights off. You can see my thingy lights aren't there. So I'm going to get an accurate representation because I'm going to the dark area now. I'm going to look at my doorbell. It's just come on. If you can see that, it says, there is motion at your front door. <laughs> you can probably see that on the ring camera. And you can probably hear what I'm saying on both cameras. So I'm going to run it back through so you can see what I mean. And even better than that, I'm going to put my door coat in. And now, he just told me that my door's open and unlocked, and who unlocked it? And I can actually lock it from the ring remote, which is fantastic. You may think that's great for my house or my small clinic, but what about my clinic that is in amongst other businesses? Well, that's actually a benefit because you can spread the cost of the CCTV, but more important than that, you can have different people given access to your cameras without being access to your settings so they can monitor it and they may want to know because people being bad at your place can also be bad at the other place so if you've got an accountant and a dentist office nearby they may want to know what's going on and you think why should i invest the money for them to get the benefit but you're really getting the benefit because you're no longer paying an army of people to monitor your cctv you've got 20 willing and 
able people monitoring it for you whenever there's an alarm goes off that will take action because they want to make sure it's okay. So you've got plenty of eyeballs looking after your place. And that means your vision is expanded because you're using 20 or 30 sets of eyes as opposed to just your own. And that also works when you're out of phone signal because You don't want to know about the event after it happens, but if you've got family, friends, and other business owners all connected to your cameras, they can monitor it and know what's happening and take action for you while you're out of cell service. So how do you encourage this group of helpers to help you? The main thing is to talk to them first and to help them to see the benefit. And I don't suggest that you ask them to pay for it unless they offer. I suggest that you offer it to them as a freebie, as as a friendly request, saying, I'd love to put the camera here. It's going to cover some of your building. Would you like to be able to monitor it as well if you just help me out when they have a call and you can see what happens? Now, don't forget these cameras are two-way voice activated as well. So these people that are watching can activate the voice recording and go straight through to the person that may be causing trouble or may want further information and they can deal with that on your behalf. You don't need these people sat in rooms looking at these screens all the time because it's just on your phone. And so when you achieve this mix of business uh, win-win situ- when you achieve this win-win situation for the businesses in your area around your clinic it's an amazing feeling and it's a win-win for everybody but now let's talk about so if we take the standard rural clinic and place it in this building here we can see we have many options for placing security cameras in the driveway on the left hand side of the building we could place a floodlight cam from Ring, and that would illuminate the whole of the parking area with an activated light, and would also be able to see people on the road coming in if that's legal in your area, country, or state. And so I'm just gonna place on the map, if you listen to this on the podcast, I can suggest getting the video version so that you can have a look at this, and you'll see that we can see the area that would be covered by the Ring floodlight cam. If we then deal with the rear of the house, we could place the camera on the back of the house looking outwards, but sometimes it's better to place it in the trees with a solar panel. Uh, They come with that with a ring if you get the correct model. And you can see the whole back of the house from a more advantageous viewpoint. And I find that to be better in many ways. If we then go to the far right hand side of the house as you look forward, we can see that a camera either on the house looking out or in the trees looking in would be beneficial. If we're using trees looking in, we may need a signal booster for your Wi-Fi to be able to pick it up. And then we go to the front of the house and we have two things that we should do here. One is a camera on the front left-hand side of the house pointing outwards so we can see the whole front and across the front. And the second thing is a ring doorbell cam which will allow us to illuminate the path coming up to the door and see people's faces at the door. That way we can use the security buzzer to get them in or any other thing or we can see whether to answer the door or not. And if we look at the fields of view overlaid over each other, we will see that the clinic now has a 360 degree visual field around it where members of staff, yourself, family members can all monitor and be notified when there's movement in those areas. It also allows us to look at the people coming to the front door and decide whether to open that front door remotely or in person based on who we're expecting. Again, if you're listening to the audio version of this podcast, I suggest going to instantcairo.com, clicking on podcast, and then going down to find the video representation so you can see this overlaid. So there are some basic principles that we need to cover. One is get as many people as you can to be aware of your installation before you do it. Two, check with the county, council or area where you are to see if it's legal to do it and follow all their procedures. Check with the colleagues around you to see if it's possible for them to A, either help you with costs or most importantly B, be willing to see your cameras through being shared, not given access to settings so that they can see and respond to incidents when they occur. And then of course, we need to cover every angle and that can be done with four cameras very easily. 
For instance, even if it's a large building, a camera on each corner can see all the way around. But then at each access that's going to be used by the public, we also need a doorbell cam to be able to do that. And I do recommend the floodlight cams for areas that you can have floodlights in as well. But what about the more tricky installations, like a U-shaped building? Well, don't forget, this is where you can come to each other's aid. A quick talk to the person across the hallway can sometimes mean you get a better camera angle because you can point each other's cameras at each other's facades and then share those access to each other. But again, check the legality. But as long as you remember to check legality, cover all four corners and the entrance door and get as many eyeballs as you can to see your feed that includes family and friends and the local businesses that are near you, you will win every time. And clinic security doesn't have to cost a lot. Well, the podcast is officially over and all the stuff that you came for has already been said, but some of you like to stay behind for all the things that happen during the podcast. And there's a few this time. There's a bit of a blooper, I must admit, and there's me wearing this t-shirt. And so <laughs> if you want to stick around and see that, great. If not, we'll see you next time on instantcairo.com. With the green screen, it's perfectly visible. Ow! Get that thing out of here. <laughs> well, at least you're suitably ticked off. Oh, you're recording! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, hand off wall. <laughs> kind of cheat your body that way a little bit. There you go. Am I looking at you? Kind of, but not. You kind of look, you look at my... I look, yeah. We we'll just kind of look kind of like cross paths. Okay. I'm looking beyond you? No, you're looking at me. You're looking at me. You're okay. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what I'm saying. <laughs> X-ray neutralized, you're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> what does that say thank you? You don't see. Oh, yeah. I'm just supposed to look. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, I forgot. <laughs> I was like... You didn't even have a line. You forgot a line you didn't even have. <laughs> Bad cat, so <laughs>
We'll, we'll say we've got that and we'll reshoot it. <laughs>